I've got some firsts for you, or at least some firsts for me. I just raced this Lauf Siegler Rigid Core Wireless with the new SRAM Apex 12 speed group here in upstate New York at the first annual Northwinds Gravel Classic. Race was a hoop, bike was a lot of fun to ride, and I'm generally pretty happy with this Apex group. Bike is 2,600 bucks, which is a good deal for 12 speed wireless hydraulic setup. I want to tell you about the bike. I want to tell you how the $200 power meter upgrade, which you can get, compares to the standard spider-based quirk. Tested those two together. To do so, I need to pull the data off the hammerhead, the shrammer head, and the cracked <laughs> screen garment here. First, take a second to subscribe. I'm gonna go clean myself up and we will meet back here to talk gravel bike racing and a new bike and group. For context, let's start with the race. Northwinds Gravel Classic, a first year event held in between Syracuse and Watertown here in upstate New York. The tree coverage uh, is incredible, especially for a kid who grew up in New Mexico and lives in Colorado. The seemingly ever-present tree canopy uh, was pretty and also served as a great wind block. Yes, there was wind in the Northwinds Gravel Classic, but we were protected for most of the time. These roads are used primarily in the summer by ATV riders and in the winter by snowmobilers. There was a bit of pavement, but the vast majority of the 95 mile course, as well as the shorter two other distances are on these nice, narrow, quiet gravel roads. I got out yesterday on a shakedown ride with race director Andy Short, uh, Genevieve Janson, and some other Canadians who had popped across the border and then some locals like Corey Burns. Speaking of ATVs, for the neutral start, Andy let us out on his uh, before turning us loose for the race. I managed to flat just, I don't know, five or 10 minutes <laughs> into the race uh, on a stretch of rocky road where we're hitting some puddles. Right. Yeah, it's flat. Good. Thanks for asking. Where are you, Cut? I can hear you, I can't see you. Good. Yeah, just flat. Pour a little water on there. Okay, well that took forever. But now we're good. And now we're dropped. See how the rest of the day goes. <laughs> oh, gravel racing. So I chased for quite some time. Never saw the fronts of the race again, but caught up with a swelling group and ended up sixth on the day after an attacking Corey stuck it to me there uh, in the closing miles. In true rural gravel style, Andy routed the finish around a barn and through a cornfield uh, to get into the finish. Aid stations were well placed throughout and most welcome. I raced with a U Sweep pack and was happy to have that, but also even happier to have some friendly faces helping us out at various stops along the way, or even spots where you could just grab a bottle on the fly. Now let's talk about the bike, Lauf Siegler Rigid Core Wireless. Lauf's first product, as you may recall, was the leaf suspension fork. Most of the Lauf bikes come with that, but not all of them. So this is the Lauf Siegler Rigid, and you can get this bike now kind of like this for 2600 bucks, which is a great deal for a 12 speed electronic hydraulic group bike. This is a little different because this is a loaner from SRAM. So instead of the E13 wheels and different cockpit, you're seeing zip configuration, but it's pretty close to that bike. So I came away impressed. The front is a touch slacker than I would prefer. It's in the you know 70.1 degree head angle, so on the road it feels a little bit sleepy, but this is not designed for road racing, it's designed for gravel, and once on the loose gravel, it feels right at home. Speaking of loose gravel, they were playing at Northwinds Gravel Classic at the festival party after the race. The finish was cool in that it's in the middle of, from my ignorant perspective, the middle of nowhere. A lot of gravel races are in rural areas, but you'll often finish in the downtown of whatever the town is, whether that's Emporia or Stillwater. 
finishing literally in the woods was a nice thing. It's just super quiet and don't have to deal with any sort of cars at all. The, did a video when the Apex Group launched about the full details. You can click on that uh, for all the details and some of my context of electronic groups versus mechanical groups and SRAM stuff versus Shimano and Campy for the gravel. D a couple things notable about the Apex, which is the fourth tier group, Red, Force, Rival, Apex. It comes in four different configurations. SRAM goes down to a 10 tooth small cog normally with the apex group you can do that and you can also go down to an 11 tooth why would you want to do that because that works with existing you know 11 speed wheels uh and that doesn't require the shram xd driver so that's the case for instance with the stock e13 wheels on the lauf siegler rigid uh core wireless which Otherwise, is this configuration, and if you've got an existing 11-speed wheel, so that's that's a plus. Turns out, though, one tooth can make a difference. Uh, I've ridden this bike a few hundred miles, including and been Raby's birthday Grand Fondo, 145 mile, 12 or 11,000 foot, uh, big old birthday ride, and I got spun out quite a bit with the stock 40 tooth ring so for this event i put on the 44 for a couple reasons one to get a little more top end and two because that has a quirk power meter so i could test that against the upgrade option of the apex and it also works for rival the 200 dollar spindle power meter that works with a triple a battery that slides in on a sled uh, in through the left hand crank so a little bit more on that in a minute as far as gearing having a 44 paired to the 1144 was adequate there was enough rope on both ends having a one-to-one -one 44 front and back uh, was good for some of these steep climbs and the 4411 i was able to you know be over 30 miles an hour at a reasonable cadence, like a 95 RPM or so. Compare that to a 40, the stock configuration, when I did Raby's birthday fondo, there were bits, granted there was a lot of downhill, big Colorado mountains, but there were bits I was doing 120 RPM, you know, basically lighting my chamois on fire with a super high cadence, like max cadence that day was like 145, 148, something like this. So your results, your mileage may vary, and you've got options with chain rings. Proponents of a two ring system would say, well, you know, if you just had a double, you wouldn't need to change rings. For my money, I would prefer to have the 1044, but the 1144 is adequate, and then you may just need to dial in the chain ring uh, based on your preferences. The tires are Hutchinson made, zip branded. Uh, there are ex the G40 Explorer, that's SRAM's name for all things gravel now. Puncture was right at the edge of the main tread and the sidewall. Sometimes that's where there's a gap in the protection. I don't know if that's the case here, if it was just dumb luck, but that's where the puncture happened. So let's talk power, the power. The $200 upgrade power meter I found it to be pretty good. And while I don't expect power meters across the board from all the different companies to align and agree, it makes sense to me and I feel like power meters from the same company should agree. Uh, that's not the case with say, mm, Garmin power meter pedals uh, and the tax smart trainers are now owned by the same company and they just read a little bit different. <laughs> so, I mean, those started off as two different companies. They're still two different brands, but they're owned by the same company and they don't align perfectly. So that's kind of the deal with power meters. Often power meters will have their own personalities. And as long, the common wisdom has been, as long as the meter is consistent unto itself, that is good enough for training. So how does this stack up? Well, in the first round of testing the two meters in Boulder, I used Zwift Power's uh, power analysis tool. It's free, it's easy, and it's a quick way to compare files from multiple meters. 
as you can see, that's pretty darn close, you know, within certainly within that one to two percent range. There's a bit more of a delta on the much shorter durations, you know, one second, five second. But once you get up into the five, 10, 20 minute durations, it's pretty darn close. I'm happy with how closely those two power meters track. For today's files, they were too huge for Zwift power. The, I got error messages when trying to upload <laughs> the race files to Zwift power. So I went over to use DC Ray's tool, DC Rainmaker, Raymaker has created a tool. It's a subscription thing that I pay for. And there, again, the files tracked quite cl closely, especially on the longer durations. And when looking at the full files here, there's a bit more of a gap and that's because I neglected to standardize the settings on the computers. The hammerhead had an auto pause where the Garmin was just running the whole time. So that added a lot more zeros into the equation. So when you zoom into just the race and not the ride over, the ride back from the race and then the standing around time, the files are again, super close uh, in terms of average power on the whole and then the, the shorter duration. So, Bottom line on this power meter upgrade, which is $200 and works with the rival and this new Apex. Sure, it's heavier. You're not getting distinct left and right measurement. But for a $200 upgrade, I think it's a screaming deal and one I can happily recommend based on my limited experience thus far. Overall, I really liked how this bike feels, the Lauf Sigla Rigid. Some of that can be attributed to the saddle, the seat post, the frame, the tires, tire pressure. Of course, the Physique Argo saddle is something we're seeing spec on a lot of gravel bikes. The shape agrees with me. Again, this bike is not spec exactly as Lauf sells it because it's a SRAM demo bike. There are zip parts. Tire clearance for days, way more than I would use, but certainly that translates to great mud clearance uh, if you find yourself in, in such a sticky situation. It does seem to hit that gravel sweet spot of being comfortable for all day riding and racing, but not super sloppy or sluggish feeling. So I think it's a great feeling bike. And I again, think it's a great price for what you're getting. I continue to be impressed by this apex group, considering the price, considering that it's a fourth tier group, the shape and feel of the levers in particular, I appreciate compared to the top end red, for instance, where there's some rough edges on the underside of the lever here that is smoothed off and there's just plenty of room to fit three fingers behind the lever a smaller diameter hood feels good in my hands uh, and it's just a comfortable highly functional shape so two ergonomically content thumbs up for the apex group and thumbs up for this bike especially at this price Overall, big high five to the volunteers and the crew who put on Northwind's Gravel Classic. I appreciate you guys having me out. And the next time you're at an event, be sure to give those volunteers a high five as they are helping you and me enjoy the ride. And there's the champion. Opa! We're going to capture the champ here. Not bad, Rody. Here's the dude who won. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> we did it.